Relays. An electrical device allowing the use of a low current circuit to control the operation of a high current component. Relays come in various sizes, shapes, and pin configurations, but they typically always have at least two sections, the coil side or primary circuit, and a switch side or secondary circuit. We call the switch side the secondary circuit because it will not operate without a properly functioning coil or primary. On a typical relay, the coil pins are 85 and 86, and the switch pins are 30 and 87, and sometimes 87 8. This can vary. Sometimes they're just called 1, 2, 3, and 4. Look at the relay or use your meter to test which is which. Make sure you stick around to the end and I'll show you how to quickly and efficiently test your relay and your relay circuit. But before we get into that, let's take a look at why relays are useful in our automotive functions. Imagine a starter motor on an engine. This starter motor is going to draw a lot of amps, which means that in order to power it, you'll need some large gauge wires connected to the battery for it to work. You'll also need a switch of some kind to energize the motor and de-energize it after the engine starts. In the application of a vehicle, the starter switch would typically be in the ignition. So in order for the circuit to operate, those large gauge wires would have to come all the way into the cab, through the switch, then out to the starter. This would be a lot of heavy gauge wire going in and out of the cab, and if you add things like headlights, wipers, horn, etc., there would be a lot of heavy wiring running all over the place. Relays allow us to remove a lot of that heavy gauge wire and only keep it where it's needed. By placing a relay in the engine compartment, we can run the heavy gauge wire to the starter through the switch side or secondary circuit and control it with the coil or primary side with some relatively smaller gauge wire, as the wiring for the primary circuit only has to be large enough to carry the current for the electromagnet coil. Now we only have little wires running in and out of the cab and all the heavy gauge stuff outside. Now that we know the basics of why we use relays, let's take a look at how a relay actually works. As mentioned earlier, a relay has two sections, a coil and a switch, or a primary and a secondary. Looking at the coil side first, you'll notice that it is just a coil of wire wrapped around a magnetic core. When you apply a power and ground, this coil becomes a power consumer and creates a magnetic field. This got me a little curious, so I decided to see if I could unwind this coil to see how long the wire actually is. I tried to unwind it all in one piece, but as the wire is so thin, it kept breaking. I failed at being able to measure the length, so I just wadded it all up so you could see just how much wire is wound around the coil. That was quite a task, but my curiosity is now satisfied. Back to it. When troubleshooting the primary side of a relay, it's relatively quite simple. Since the coil is the load, you'll only need available voltage and a path to ground. There will be a switch somewhere, which could be positive or negative in its location. If you pull the relay out and find the pins for the coil, 85 and 86, you can just put your meter in those pins, activate the circuit, and you should have available voltage. If not, chase down whichever leg you're missing. On the relay itself, you test for continuity on the coil pins and make sure they're not open. This relay has 84 ohms of resistance, and this one had 107, give or take. If you see OL or something really high, there may be an issue with the coil. But remember that the coil creates a magnetic field to operate the switch. Even if your coil tests okay, you'll still need to be able to make sure it's strong enough to pull the switch over. You can see here the switch moving when I give the coil power. To test the switch side with the relay pulled out, you should have a power source for the switch and then a path to ground. What will be different about this is there will be a load somewhere within that circuit. On the relay itself, we have a couple of pins to choose from on the secondary side. Typically these are 30 and 87, which will be normally open until the magnetic field is created. Then they'll close and make contact. Some relays use an 87A pin, which tells you that it is connected to the 30 pin without power. And when you energize the coil, it will then open. If 30 is the power in, then it will always be headed out of the 87A pin until you activate the relay. Then power flow will change from 87A to 87. However, keep in mind that power could go into any pin, it just depends on how it's designed to be used. So when testing the relay, you should have continuity or low ohms between 30 and 87A, and an open or OL between 30 and 87 until you activate the coil. Then those readings will flip. Alright, so there are a couple of different ways to test relays. Lyle Tools makes some relay testers that you might like to use, but they'll cost you a little bit of money. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested. I don't personally use these, but they do have an advantage in testing a circuit if you suspect that it has unintended resistance affecting performance. You can take live voltage readings to see if the coil or load is using all the voltage or not. Be aware, some kits don't contain all relay testers. You'll need to buy the master kit in order to get everything. This particular one is missing the center pin. Using a typical schematic, we're going to keep things a bit simple here and just use the old fashioned way of testing. Most relays will be wired with effectively two power pins, then two or three that are wired to ground. You're going to check for power first. Pull the relay, using the battery negative, set your meter to voltage, 
and probe every single pin in the receptacle. You should have two powers. Make sure that the key is on if needed and that the circuit is otherwise activated as in turned on. If you have your two power pins, then you know both the primary and secondary have available voltage. If not, figure out which one you're missing. Then switch your meter over to continuity and test the other pins. The coil circuit should show low ohms as there shouldn't be another load in there. Remember the coil is the load on the primary. The secondary circuit will show some sort of resistance, but that's okay because you're seeing the load resistance that will be activated. If you don't have one of these, then diagnose that first before you condemn the relay. Okay, just to recap. Remove the relay and use a multimeter with the negative lead hooked to the battery negative. Set your meter to volts and probe all pins. We have source voltage here, no voltage here, source volts again on this pin, and zero volts on this one. So based on these results, we know that the power inputs are fine, and you'll now need to move to the outputs. Set your meter to continuity and probe all pins again. You can skip the power pins as we've already confirmed their integrity, but I'll show you the full process. No continuity here, that's good. 120 ohms on this pin. This is the load you're reading, so don't consider that high resistance quite yet. No continuity to this power pin, which is perfect. Then an out of range here. Remember that you've got to activate the relay coil circuit in order to have continuity. The switch is on the ground side, but again, it may be on the power depending on the schematic. So we've confirmed the output side integrity. If you had an issue or readings that was out of spec for any one of these legs, you'll need to diagnose and fix those first before condemning the relay. If you do happen to have all four or five paths, then it's a good chance that the relay is the problem. The nice thing about relays is there's typically a couple of the same models pretty close to each other, so swap -nostics, swap Nostics works pretty well here. Just grab another one and throw it in to see if it works or not. But if it still doesn't, then you'll need to check the circuit as described. Relays are very common in the automotive and diesel world, and knowing how to troubleshoot one properly can save you a ton of time in the diagnostic process. Luckily, they're all very similar, so once you get comfortable with the procedure, you can test pretty much any of them. While I'm at it, this is a weather-resistant relay. You would want to use one of these anytime you're wiring a relay out in the elements. I'll put a link in the descriptions if you're interested in getting one. I wired up a fog light once using the wrong kind of relay and had all sorts of problems with it after about a month or so. Let me get it apart. It's held together with a strong clip and uses a sealing ring to help keep out any moisture. The relay itself is also sealed from the inside. This helps prevent corrosion from forming. You can see here with a normal indoor relay, there is no seal, and a plastic cover simply snaps over the metal components and doesn't keep any moisture out at all. Functionally, these relays are the same. I can put the indoor style right in the receptacle and it will fit and it will work. But if you use an indoor relay for outdoor applications, be ready for rust and corrosion to begin and affect the operation of your circuit. All this rust caused excessive resistance and made it so the magnetic field wasn't strong enough to contact the switch. I hope you found the video informative. If you have any suggestions or other testing methods you know of, leave them down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching.